Cool. Kia ora, everybody. Um, welcome. It's Asher Anderson here again from Flora and Fauna of Aotearoa, and I'm here with some good friends and uh, special guests, uh, Nice Manuel and Sonia Ihimera, who were with us last time when we were um, having a discussion around the significant natural areas and the implications and the process, um, the epic botch up that had gone on up here in the far north. And uh, uh, that was last week, and then we were all at the Hikoi um, in Kaikoi on Friday, the 11th last week, which was um, an, an incredible event that brought together, I think, 1,500 to 2,000 people from all across the district and all across um, the country as well for the same purpose. And um, I'd like to, you know, welcome both of you for a, for a quick recap, you know, let's have a little bit of a reflection on, on how, we, how we felt about it and, and you know, um, all of the, the energy and the spirit that was brought, you know, and the message that was, was brought there right to the council. Um, Nairi, I think you, you, did you start up at the cake with the hikoi on Thursday? Oh, yes, I did, I'm uh, here. Um, me a tata tahi e mehi ki te atua, mai te timatanga me te whakamatu ngā, ngā manuhiri uh, whakarongo mai i tēnei pānui. Um, kia ora mai tātou. Uh, kia a koe, Sonia, uh, e te whanaunga, uh, ngā mehi nui kia a koe, ki te haramai ki te tautoko, ki te haramai ki te whakanui tēnei kaupapa, te kaupapa tino nui, mā te tāhai o mātou uh, whakapapa. Um, Kei a koe, Ash, uh, ngā mahi ki a koe, mō tō tau toko, e ngā mea katō, mai te uh, timatanga o tō tātou kaitiakitanga, uh, e tū ana koe i nai nei, uh, me ngā wā o mua. Uh, so ngā mahi ki a, ki a kōrua. Um, just wanted to say thank you um, to you both. Uh, I know going on a hikoi, uh, specifically you, Ash, you've, you've never been on a hikoi as such. Um, everybody thought it was predominantly Māori and our point was that it mainly was. Um, however, there's always room for unity. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we began our hikoi, um, well, I left Whangaroa at two o'clock in the morning. Um, the night before, I had the uh, honour of um, going to pick up Te Kotahitanga flag. Now that flag was the flag that marched in 1975 and um, has the Modi of Dame Fina Cooper and her whānau. So I went and retrieved that the night before from Wainui, uh, Waitangi, um, from uh, Hinefare Haruwera. And um, I was blessed to graciously uh, bring that on our journey from Waitangi up to Te Reinga, Te Rerenga Wairua, and begin the hikoi there with um, our whānau from Muri Whenua Meo Pauri. So there's a lot of wheels turning when a hikoi happens, but it's so beautiful when it does. So um, the whole process, looking back on it now, you know, going up there that early in the morning and watching the sun come up and hearing the waiata, the pūrea, all of it uh, happening in our tikanga um, gives us, as Māori, as people, um, the blessing to, to carry this journey out and um, to ensure that the kaupapa is protected in every way. No one is hurt. And when you are marching through other people's lands, mm. that you are respectful to the hokainga there. So the march began there. It then uh, went down to Te Hapua, uh, and then onward um, to uh, Te Kao, where they were also uh, greeted by a pōwhiri with um, te kura kaupapa there and the kohanga and, and the whānau there. Uh, they had a brief stop in there and then carried on down to Waimanoni where um, Hune Haruera and his whānau and the kura down there also did the same thing. So this is how it gains momentum. Yeah. And then by the time I got to Kaitaia, um, after passing through all the other hapu, all the other hapu started joining. Yeah. And uh, got into uh, Muri Whenua, uh, Kaitaia, and um, they laid their take down on the ground quite clearly, 
blocked off the whole of Kaitaia, which was beautiful to see. Mm. Said what they had to say that the council has had no no like time to even respond because it's not what they've got to say to us, it's what we've got to say to them. Yeah. And then the hikoi uh, carried on out to um uh out towards Te, uh, Te Rarua, which is our Ahipara. Mm -hmm. and Girl. then carried on from there to uh, Hirakino where they laid to rest um, at Manukau Marae and then the hikoi then began again um, carrying on from there over to Pangaru um, where they had a, a ceremony um, giving you know giving giving our, our um, manakitanga to the haukainga there and our Wairua to them because it's the whare of Dame Fina Kupa. Mm. And then um, Auntie Hine Puru, she joined the marches of that point and for all of you that don't know who she is, that is the daughter of Dame Fina Kupa. And then um, uh, they went on to cross on the ferry at Rawane over to join the rest of South Hokianga. And then that leg came in from the Tahiti Waima area with hundreds of people. So um, over on our side, so we had Ngātikahu and Whāroa come from the top end of the East Coast. And uh, we met with Ngāti Wai, Ngāti Hine, uh, Te... Who else was there? Rāwhiti, Paihia, Waitangi, we all come in from the Eastern Corridor. Um, we came with three bus loads and uh, we then followed on to up near left, is it left bank where Dai's Cafe is, that right yeah. there. Yeah. Pulled the buses in there, all deployed off there and um, got our pohiri on by Hokainga, which is um, Kaikohe, our Kaikohe. Uh, Ngāpuhi, Hokainga, pohirid us on there. We went, paid our respects to the Hokainga, to the Ahika for having us all. And uh, from that point on, we, we all carry um, a Modi stone each from each area, which uh, signifies the same as the Kotahitanga flag. Um, and I'm not sure if you're aware, but the coordinators of this ropu that's uh, put in the hard yards um, was all mana wahine, um, bar Ruben. Mm. So uh, Ruben was our 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 guardian. Um, he was our kai haide. Um, because in Te Ao Māori, there's spaces that women go and there's spaces that men go. But to have that balance correct, this was all driven by one uh, mana wahine and um, tautokot by, by Ruben, by Hone Harwira, by um, Andrew Kendall, by those that ended up joining. But Ruben was our kaiwhakahaere the whole entire time. And um, I just wanted to say what a beautiful rōpū. It's the best rōpū I have ever, ever been in um, because it was mana wahine. Mm -hmm. And we all had put in our thoughts, our whakaro, toward what we're going to do when we get there. Um, so we wrote a letter of opposition um, and there were four main points of that letter. Um, and that letter was the letter that was gifted, or well, wasn't gifted actually, it was whittled to the council <laughs> on that day. A lot of people came, I felt, with their own agendas. However, that letter of opposition, um, I'll, I'll bring it up and I'll read it to you. Yeah, okay. so that you're right. aware of what is in that letter mm. because it covers us all, not just Māori, but it covers us all. Give me a sec, sorry. No worries. Yeah. Um, 
Well, hu we. huge respect to all of you. You know, we felt it when, you know, when everyone arrived in Kaikoui that, you know, it was, the presence was massive. Um, yeah. That, and it's, I tell you what, um, it's hard to get Ngāpuhi in one room. <laughs> but um, you need a if common you know how to, <laughs> Yeah, if you know how to call a party. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, sort of one of those, those times. Um, mm, yeah. Yeah, where it was, it was beautiful, you know. It was just so beautiful, the whole entire journey of it all tiring but beautiful yeah um i can't even find it sorry that's okay well, maybe we can um i can put it in the description if you can send me a copy we can we can yeah. put that in the description Absolutely. For people to read. yeah no I, yeah. I was there um and and was you know it was a little bit difficult to hear at times but i heard the letter being read out um yeah no it was it was really good um sonia what were your what what was your feeling on the day? I saw you there, you know, in the crowd of people and you know, walking together and and you know being being there. Mm. Yeah. Um Tinakwe, both of you. Um yeah, much love to you both for the mahi that you have done and are still doing, but particularly leading up to the hikoi and um you know, I probably don't want to add a whole lot because I'm listening hard, actually, to, um, to Nairi's korero. And actually, that probably is the most important korero to hear. Um, yeah, we, uh, my husband and I, Steve and I, arrived and one of my neighbours um, wanted to come. She's from Latvia and Canada. And had recently, actually two years ago, went back to Latvia with her daughter to revisit the steps of her mother and grandparents. And some of the atrocities that happened over there, you know, the genocidal stuff, the history uh, of there. And so she has always been very quiet, you know, the 1080 protest stuff, you know, absolutely adamant, you know, not okay with that, not okay with the SNA stuff. But, um, you know, it was really nice for me to have um, Sylvia say, can I come too? Can I come with you? And so actually to, to step out and do something that she felt was really important here. Um, so the three of us arrived together. And, um, you know, it was just seeing people arriving, people merging. And, you know, the wairua was, uh, was really one of calmness. Yeah. Um, and wanting to go forward. What moved me, um, a, a number of a whole lot of things, but uh, actually, um, uh, Fina Cooper's whānau, I've known them for probably, would be getting on to 25 years, I guess, from um, some of my time down in Auckland, I got to meet them down there. And at one stage, um, Fina's great granddaughter, she lived with me for a little while. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I've had a close contact with that whānau and had been talking to them a couple of weeks before the hikoi back and forth um yeah so it was good to see them there and they came through the crowd and we had hugs and you know and um talking about how significant this day was particularly for them you know the descendants of fina to be there um walking in her footsteps but really walking with her presence her wairua presence with them so that, that was, um, you know, it was a privilege for me to actually just be around them for a little while and hear what it is that they were, how they were processing this and what was happening for them. Um, so that was huge. The, the th other thing that impacted me a lot was the amount of children, our tamariki there, you know, and they were just all in, uh, often a lot of them were in little groups with their school uniforms on. Um, you know, and you could just hear this chatter going on around you with these little pockets of our tamariki. And um, I just thought, you know, these, these children will never forget this day and they will understand the importance of what it is that they are doing. And, uh, you know, I just really felt this aroha too for all of the parents, the adults that were with them, that were helping them to, you know, just to, to totoko them, to afi them, they had already been talking to them, you know, and here they were in, the, in that moment. 
Um, so those things were really important. The, um, the journey itself, and I loved catching up with you, Asha, and of course, Brad was there. Um, and key people that I had protested with before, 1080 issues, um, but I'd protested with before and, you know, here and there, um, Di Maxwell as well. So here we were again for something that was very, very important to us and an urgency about it as well, mm. actually, of, of um, not going to take, you know, being controlled or being told what to do on the whenua that we live in and that we're kaitiaki of. So there was those things that were um, impacted me a lot on the day. And I guess um, since then, there's a lot to process. Yeah. You know, we've actually had a hectic three weeks leading up to the hikoi. And actually, you have to say, a lot of sleepless nights, you know, a lot of um, probably overthinking. Um, but, you know, asking questions, talking, a lot of kōrero back and forth with various people, trying to find our way through this thing that had been thrown at us and how best to, to deal with it. So um, despite our tiredness and our weariness, there was a lot of energy on the day, but it was a calm energy, the actual day of um, the hikoi and kaikoi but focused as well. So that, that, that was really good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I have, yeah, have some of the same um, moments, you know, in being in the crowd and, and, and the singing, you know, and I think that the, the waiata that came from the people just being there, being present while that, you know, that yeah. while that was, um, while that was happening was really quite profound for me as Pakia, um, you know, to to see the is it Rangamari, <laughs> the, mm. the peace, you know, the peaceful but strong nature of coming together in unity, you know, um, all of the other divisive issues aside, to be there, you know, for the same reason or essentially the same reasons, um, and to have the council there present taking that taking that and receiving that message. Um, and, you know, and when um, I think Ruben asked whether we wanted to hear the council speak and everyone said no, <laughs> you know, I think that was the clear moment where it was very clear. It's about what we have to say, what we have to say in response to, you know, to what they have done and, and you know, the, the actions that they've taken. Um, so and I thought that the the kite full of stones, you know, that was just an, an incredibly amazing, powerful um, way of, of transferring the spirit of of all the people that, that came there, you know, with with that message for that reason. And now it's in the council's hands and what are they going to do about it? Um, so I'm just I'm just so grateful to to have been present there and to have been a part of it. And I, you know, I'm not holding out much hope for whether they have received the message yet because on that very day James Shaw sent out that letter to councils um you know and it's a lot of double speak it's um it's saying a lot without saying anything and so you know uh, as we know and I think was said on the day is that you know the work has just begun really to to actually make sure that we get the proper outcome that we want out of this and um, you know that things move forward in a way that are respectful and and that um, that we can we can all work together you know towards the biodiversity outcomes because this is you know this is about people too this is as much about people uh, I think Ash that there's a couple of things that um, I'd like to talk about tonight. So um, the yep. portal around the Modi stone. So I'll, mm. I'll tell you the story about the Modi stone. Yeah, that'd be great. Te kupu Modi, it, that's life. It's a life force. Mm. Without it, we don't exist. Ko te mm. te hao te atua, that is life. So those stones were not handed to council. <laughs> those stones were handed to uh, te kura kaupapa or kai kohe kohe. Oh, thank you for clarifying. So they will be the kaitiaki of those stones. Those stones will then just be protected by them for this short period of time. Okay. And then when Limvit Park 
is um, fully built because a new uh, sports stadium is going up there. Those stones will be unveiled there. So the modi of that hikoi will live on forever. Yeah. Cool. So, so that's one thing. The other thing about James Shaw. So um, we understand that there are different levels to this kaupapa. Mm. So we have our district council, we have our regional council, and then we have central government. And then on top of that layer, we have the United Nations Agenda 2021-2030. So for us as, as, as Māori, as I can only speak from that term because that's where my whenua is, as Māori. So um, for us as Māori, um, what they're proposing to take away from us is something that is taonga tuku iho. So we don't own the land, we are the land. Mm. And that concept there for them to then come over and put yet again some type of policy over whenua Māori is like someone blanketing us with a white sheet and saying, you are no longer here. That's what it's, it is for us. Yeah, I understand that, yeah. yeah. So in Article 2 of Te Tiriti o Waitangi, no, 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 no. Under he whakaputanga? No, 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 no. Now, in the United Nations Agenda 2021, 2030, it's to put us all into one category. They, they utilise the language of biodiversity, indigenous biodiversity. You know, they use this language. Yes. And we understand this language now. Because we are the indigenous biodiversity. So for us as Māori, our thing is, well, you know what? We're going to look after it. We are going to be the authority of it. Ngā hapu o te tai tokero, ngā hapu o te whare tapu o ngā pohi are going to take this authority and put it into our own hands. Mm. And while we're doing that, we're going to monitor what you're doing at the same time because in all reality ash we all know they need to catch up it's not us that's on the on on the back wall here it's them so all of their lands that they stole that they brought whatever whatever has now come to a point that um it's diminishing because of the use that they use it for that's right yeah so now they're looking at all this untouched whenua, which 144,000 hectares of that up here in the far north is Māori land. And for us as Māori, we look at it as a collective, not as an individual. It's only been fractionised by a government system to have a shareholding um system working on on whenua Māori, you own 2.5 shares of blah, blah, blah. It's fractionising our land so that we fight with ourselves. Yeah. So we're changing the way we're thinking as Māori and we're uniting together in order to be that, that voice and we're putting our ways, rewinding the clock back to what our tūpuna taught us. We are kaitiaki. This land is here for our babies, our future, to always have somewhere to call home. And that comes with great responsibility. And we know that. We've always known that. Hence why all the land that we've got is significant. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I totally understand um, what you're saying and I'm very grateful that you can share that, you know, with, with me and then with everyone who watches this because there's an, there's an understanding gap that needs to be bridged, um, yeah. you know, for us all to move forward to that better situation, you know, that, you know, being the authorities of ourselves and, and you know, each having our own mana. And then it's, it's something that we all hope for, but, you know, are, are in different situations and, 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 you know, come from different places and hold different things dearly. But 
at the at the yeah. end of the day, there's so many, you know, there's similarities at, you know, once you've oh, yes. away everything. Absolutely. And, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There's similarities, but there's also differences. And we understand that, you know. Um, like I said, we're Tangata Whenua. Um, we're not Tangata Tiriti. We were here before they arrived. Mm -hmm. So there is a massive difference because we're the partner in this partnership. We are the partner. We're not a subject. We are the partner. Yeah, I, th I think we're still navigating our, you know, our position in all this too. And I think that's all part absolutely. of the journey, isn't it, really? Learning, um, eh? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Learning. You know, and perhaps, you know, we are the real partners. And that's, <laughs> you know, who knows Well, what the partnership between us on the ground as everyday people is all good. Mm. But when it comes to... Um, ownership, entitlement, um, history tells you that there was no partnership. You know, um, if you starve your, your partner, if you beat your partner, rape, pillage, steal everything that they have, what kind of partner is that? Sure, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, so, that, that's, yeah, I, there's dif differentials to be made between oh, people in the town crazy. as well, you know. Um, but the relationship that we have with Te Ao Pākehā and, and, you know, our, our friends, our family, you know, um, we have got Pākehā that we have married my great-great-great-grandmother, hence the name Pōra, you know. Um, it is what it is. However, uh, in this country, it's um, and, and you look at the uh, international indigenous laws. It's 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 the people of the land uh, is the lay of the law. It's a, just how it is, and it will go back to that. But what they're trying to do is take that away. And fortunate enough for us, we have a treaty. We're very fortunate to have a treaty, and we're very fortunate to have He Whakaputanga, the Declaration of Independence. Because right now, they just do whatever they want it, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. it is, it'll just be full-blown, let's go. Mm -hmm. But fortunate enough for us, we have that founding document and um, those, those two founding documents. And I'm so proud that, you know, my tūpuna was one of those signatories on He Whakaputana. And I'm a descendant of him today, and that must be why I'm so passionate about anything to do with our land, our taiyo, everything that's in my DNA. No doubt. No, no doubt. DNA, no. not SNA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, I think, um, yeah, I, I look forward to having many conversations around, you know, around, you know, the, the relationship side of things and and all of that, because I think that there's there's a lot of discovery and and a lot of, um, as I said, you know, bridging, bridging the bridging the gap with understanding and, and learning, you know, that really does need to take place mm. in this country. How, um, question, Ash, yeah. how would you feel about two governments in this country? Well, I don't like the first one, so... <laughs> 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 you know they can't even do their job properly but yeah that's um I don't uh, yeah I, I would that's probably a, a very long conversation that we could have about this but I'm not satisfied in any capacity as to what the crown has done ever I'm one of those people to be oh, I know I know so I know. so you know so uh, whose government would you be in <laughs> does there even have to be a government that would be well, a question. There has to be what they call the Confederated um, United Tribes. Mm. That's, you know, the word government. Yeah. He tau Pākehā. That's, mm. that's, that's a Pākehā concept, but it's something that everyone is familiar with when it comes to running a country, you know? Yeah, yeah. I. I feel colonized too, and I know that might. Be I a, know. I know that might be a hard <laughs> concept too, you know. But when you're born into something, and you learn about it the way that you do, and and of course you're not necessarily you're not looking behind the veils. You only learn about that as you advance in your your life, and 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 actually learn a lot of the truths 
that this never was set up to serve you or to support you or to look after you in the first place, just like it wasn't for other people. And in fact, just, you know, that why would I agree with the undermining of other people's cultures? That's not, that's not who I am. That's not what I'm about. So it never did serve me or, or people like me. It was, you know, but there's responsibility that also has to be, you know, acknowledged as well in many respects. And yeah, very, very, um, very complex, but, you know, as taking it back to the simple and having these kind of conversations and, and oh. you know, and having it amongst us, you know, because this is where it matters. So for me, when I listen, when I'm sitting here on forums like this as such, and I sit on a lot, um, and I hear our people, meaning you, me, everyone that I conversate with and have um, in my space, you know, whether it's Joe Blog down the road that has it all to me and he could be from Japan. Who knows? We still treat each other with respect as human beings. Yeah. I love having these corded or in this forum because we're in the same space. We respect one another, all of that kind of thing. And it's simple things that have turned into uh, economical development. Pūtia. Mm. So money is the biggest evil of everything. Currency, might I, I should rectify that. Currency, value, trade, all of that has brought us into the system. Um, and what you and I know, and Sonia, is we're people of the land. Uh, we have that connection to the whenua, to the soil, to the water, to the moana, to the birds, to the trees. All of it. We're connected at, in that because we know without that, we don't exist. You yeah. know? And um, this SNA corded or this SNA policy deprives us from connecting to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So to be on the same level as, you know, our federated farmers. Um, I get a little bit hoo-ha when people say, oh, farmers this, farmers that. I know a whanau up near uh, Sonia who farm so beautifully, yeah. so clean, mm -hmm. so respectful of the whenua, so respectful of the water and the ngahere. Yeah. That if we just change the way we do things, you know, um, we don't, we don't need to takahi. Now they're saying that, oh, this is pointed at development, it's, it's this, it's that, it's farming, it's all of that. And we're like, well, hang, hang on a minute. Some of our farming whānau have gone way beyond their means yes. to practice in a safer way, in a cleaner way. And in one talk, you're saying, oh, here's money for housing or here's money for one billion trees and then on the other hand you're saying we're going to put an SNA. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. You're contradicting your court at all. That's right. Yeah. You know? And so, what do you yeah, I'm, go ahead, Max. I'm, I'm very um I'm I'm very aware of what's happening as quick as they're giving as as much as they're taking. We have our three waterways corded or that's happening at the moment. Yeah. We have our Maka claims. We have our Waitangi claims. None of this to do with our whenua, our mana, and our awa should take place until the treaty um, space is dealt with. Yeah. Mm. yeah. None yeah. of it should because it will all be a breach in Te Tiriti or Waitangi, the founding document of this country. So until they can sort that out, especially up here in Te Whare Tapu o Ngākui, it ain't going to be a settlement, I'm telling you. Yeah. Mm. It's going to be reparation. You give our land back, you pay us for the last 200 years you've been renting our land, and then we're going to take care of it and everything that is resourced in this space. We're not going to kick people off and do all of that kind of stuff. 
we're going to look after it. We're going to look after our people, but we've never given, we've never been given the chance to do so. So they're scared of the unknown. Kia ora, nice. And I think you've mentioned before, we, we just have to stay vigilant, you know, and, and as you said, be ahead of the game because this is coming thick and fast and, you know, and it is, it's, it's an attempt to sever. It's an attempt to sever that connection mm. and it's not going to work. But um, I think that when you ladies are free again, maybe we can connect and keep this korero going. I think it's really, really important. And, um, and I know that people have been appreciating, you know, le learning about a lot of this stuff that they just, you know, otherwise they have no idea. So it's really, really important just to, just to keep, you know, keep the, these ties open, keep the conversations going and give people an opportunity to just keep learning. And also that we Absolutely. keep our eyes focused on, you know, what's Eyes happening. open. So yeah. where to from here? You know, we've yeah. laid that pathanga down, that we're all down. Where yeah. to from here? Um, so we had a coordinator's hui last night. Um, I think it was about... Oh, a couple of hours after the hikoi were invited to a private hui <laughs> um, that we will be attending. Uh, I don't know what we're going for, to be quite honest, but um, we have a plan. And um, let's see if the plan works. I think it will work. I won't tell you the plan yet, but <laughs> it encompasses us all. And it's, um, if, if you trust me, you'll know that we're going in the right direction um, for our people, for our whenua, and for the future um, of our tamariki, um, even the ones that are not here yet. You know, we have a plan. Kia ora, nice. I look forward to hearing you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, ladies. I, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And um, I'll get this video up probably tomorrow morning sometime and we can share it around. And, and I'll connect later with Brad. And um, But big thank you to all of the organisers for the Hikoi. And, and thank you to you, Sonia, and Nairi, and everyone who was present. It was um, an amazing experience. And I think that the, there's no way that the message is not going to be hammered home. <laughs> so we'll um, connect again soon and uh, follow the developments like a soap opera. <laughs> Namahi Ash. Namahi Sonia. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Kapai. Komarie. Kia ora. Komarie. Komarie.